Thank you very much. It's a tremendous pleasure to be here at this meeting and an amazing honor to join this group. I, I had the pleasure to attend a meeting at Casio Pino, uh, Pio Quattro about 18 months ago, and it it was a, just a fantastic and eye-opening experience. And and now to to join this academy is is a really great honor. So thank you so much. Um, so maybe I'll, I'll divide my brief remarks into, into three things that I care a lot about, science, community, and the compact between science and society. Um, science. So by, by background, I'm actually a pure mathematician who somehow wandered into biology in the mid 1980s. Um, I, an, a, a, a previous academician of, of this academy, Max Perutz, so he's uh, talked about, this is my molecule, referring to hemoglobin, because there was a molecule he deeply loved. I guess I have my molecule. It's, it's the human genome. It's a very big molecule, but it's a molecule, um, and or, well, 23 molecules, but okay. Um, and I find it amazingly interesting. I got captivated in the mid 1980s because I'd wandered into genetics and, and I got interested in the question of, you know, we could map genes and had mapped genes for 80 years that controlled single gene traits. And you could even imagine how to do that for human diseases that were caused by a single gene. But I got very interested in the question of, well, most things aren't single gene traits. They're complex, they're, they're polygenic. How could we ever read those and understand what gives rise to those that create most human genetic variation? And to make a very long story very short, mapping single genes, you look within a family. And an idea captivated me that if we could look really densely with genetic variation throughout all of the human genome, we could see far enough back in, in time to connect all humans as if they were part of one family and see those connections and use that to discover the genes that, that affect schizophrenia and Alzheimer's and other polygenic things. It was on the one hand an exciting thought and on the other hand it was totally daunting because in the mid 1980s you couldn't do anything like that. And that's how I got caught up in the generation of, of people who worked on the sequencing of the human genome. And eventually, despite not having you know, the, the right background for it, we built a genome center that was a major contributor to the sequencing of the human genome. And it finally did let us do the kinds of things we had dreamed about doing. And now we have 100,000 connections of genes to complex diseases. But more than that, it's, it's made me feel how much you can tease out of this molecule, the variation within the human species, the comparison to other species and what it will reveal about regulation, comparisons between cells, between normal cells and tumor cells. And so I, I think it's infinitely interesting how much information is in there if you're willing to keep you know, asking questions and, and figuring out how to tease out answers. And it, it has a huge impact on medicine. And so I think that sustains me that it's both useful and amazingly fascinating. And I will at least argue, you know, uh, Pake, Max Perutz, it is the most interesting molecule that, that we know on this, this planet. But that work also got me very interested in community because in, in working on the sequencing of the human genome, we had to build a community, an international community, a collaboration that lasted over 13 years that hadn't quite been done in biology before. The physicists understood how to build these communities. And it, it was a very exciting thing. And it, it set precedents that have carried over into this century. Um, in building a community, we made commitments, for example, to that we were creating public goods, that all the information would be shared freely every night with everybody, even with a private company that was trying to compete with us and, and say, you know, wanted, they wanted to sequence the human genome and we gave all their data, all our data to them. We briefly thought, oh, should we not do that? And we decided, no, there are values. We're going to do that. And so 
there is a total commitment to the concept of public goods and to sharing and working together as part of a goal that is larger than yourself. And, and that has affected me over the years too, because I've had the pleasure to uh, be part of and help start these sorts of collaborations across communities and cultures and institutions. And in my home city of Boston, I've, I've, I've had the great pleasure to build an institution uh, called the Broad Institute of MIT and Harvard that brings together seven different institutions and tries to break the barriers of institutions and fields and even uh, you know, professor type scientists from staff scientists and experiment with, with how we can do science in, in new ways that, that will extend things. And so community building is, I think, a, a very important dimension to, to what I care about. And then the third is, <clears throat> I think a lot about the compact between science and society. Certainly since World War II in the United States, which I know best, there has been a compact, an explicit compact between science and society and many other societies have this as well, that science will discover truth, that technology will discover what's possible, and that society will benefit from this, and that it is an incredibly powerful, virtuous cycle that has produced great benefit, economic benefit, health benefit, security benefit. It's a wonderful thing, but it also becomes clear over time that it, it doesn't just happen automatically. It requires tending. It requires deep commitment of people who understand the challenges in making sure that this virtuous cycle really serves society. And we've seen it break down in many ways over the past couple of decades in particular around contention over truth, um, over, over many, many other issues that I won't go into for lack of time, but that are extraordinarily evident in the United States. And so over the course of the last couple of decades, I've also tried as much as I can to become involved in, in these questions. For eight years during the Obama administration, I co-chaired the White House's Presidential Council of Advisors on Science and Technology, where we took on 39 hard problems of what should we be doing about it? and wrote reports to, to recommend paths forward. I've gotten involved in things like DNA forensics from its early days when it was practiced very poorly to, to, to try to set standards so it would be of high quality. And eventually from that grew something called the Innocence Project where DNA forensics was used to be able to show that sometimes courts just get things wrong. And even though courts don't want to admit they make mistakes, the evidence is so uh, unambiguous that they have to admit that. Um, I've got involved in issues around, um, you know, CRISPR germline editing, making CRISPR babies, which was what got me invited to come to this meeting uh, at, at, at the Vatican a year and a half ago. And I even uh, broke down and, um, and did a podcast on five really hard problems where I don't know the right answer. And, and tries to model people, uh, tries to show people struggling, grappling with, with challenging problems where the answers don't fit in a tweet. And it, it just got released. If you feel like listening to it sometime, it's called Brave New Planet. And it was a labor of love, a non-commercial labor of love where I got 33 great scientists and others to come, come weave together stories about this. So I think that's it. Um, I, I love working on human disease, the Human Genome Project. That's my molecule. I'm pretty confident that its mysteries will outlast my life. So I, I think I know where I go back to for inspiration. I care desperately about building great communities. And I really think we are stewards of this planet, stewards in particular of this compact between science and society. So the invitation to join this extremely distinguished group that is not just honorific, but does real work was something I was honored by and, and eager to join in. So thank you.